Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Charles Traub. I'm the chairperson, most of you know that, of photography, video, and related media. But there are a few strange and wonderful new faces here, so thank you for coming. Um, this is the beginning of the new year in many ways, more ways than one. Um, and we've, as students, as faculty, as visitors, as interested arts people, as all the things that we are, we're overwhelmed by the activities that are going on around us in New York City. And even in, within our own department, in which there are two events tonight, <laughs> and within the school, and so on and so forth. So um, I want to apologize first to our French guests. Thank you at the same time for being here. Uh, we hate this room. But, uh, I love it. We were, it's intimate in its own way, but uh, we're conflicting with a million other things going on in the various other rooms of the school. So forgive its impurities. Um, we have a big, big lecture series this year within the department, organized by Beatrice Gross. She will tell you more about upcoming events. You need to look at your web pages. You need to look at the department web page, the school web pages, all kinds of other places to see the various events that are going on. There are also uh, any number of visiting people coming into classes. We're going to post who's here, when, for what. Uh, most students are free to come, and outside people are free to come with they let us know. Uh, just as an example, I was looking at uh, Art in the First Person. Uh, I picked it up downstairs, my goodness. Uh, any one student that can attend all that is not going to class. So I'm worried about that. Uh, as you know, we are a department of many mixed forms, photography, video, digital concerns. We call ourselves the Department of the Lens Arts. We hope to push that into the middle of the 21st century to redefine what lens arts are. And thus, I'm happy to turn this podium over to Beatrice, who will introduce our wonderful guest. I want to thank the Sean Kelly Gallery also for cooperating with us on this. More up, please. Thank you, Charles. So as just said, this is the first event of our yearly series of lectures and performances. And I'm really, really glad that Laurent accepted our invitation here tonight. This talk this evening is held in conjunction with his current solo exhibition at the Sean Kelly Gallery. And the exhibition is entitled Sound Fossil. And you understand, I hope, in a minute why and how. Um, the show actually gathers quite a large diversity of, of works in both their style and physical treatment, which is quite characteristic of Laurent's work already. We have namely a, a large monumental video installation, paintings, silver prints, and sculptural elements, both wall pieces and ar architectural models. This exhibition is actually also characteristic because it reflects Laurent's ongoing interest in ambiguous realities, the reconstitution of ambiguous phenomena, for instance, contemporary mythologies or legends related to the evolution of technological um, developments. Just a few words about Laurent's um, biography and his recent um, exhibition activities. He was awarded the Marcel Duchamp Prize in 2008 in Paris, which allowed him to create a solo exhibition at the Pompidou Center in Paris. The exhibition was called The Horn Perspective. His work was also recently on view at the Kunstverein Arnsberg in Germany, at the Sharia Biennial, and the Samsung Museum in Seoul, Korea. He's acclaimed Nomiya Project, which is an architectural module that is installed on the rooftop of the Palais de Tokyo in Paris, has now just been extended through the end of June 2011. As for um, Laurent's public art debut in the US, some of you may have seen it uh, a couple of years ago. It was a piece entitled Infinite Light a over 80 yards long repeating rendition of the words day for night, day for night, for night, for day, etc. Made of clear glass tubing and blue neon gas that was installed on the exterior of the Hunter College Lexington Avenue um, bridge, pedestrian bridge. 
um, in 2008. Just last few words to let you know that we chose as a format today, um, instead of a traditional, more confrontational talk, we'll do somewhat of a conversation between Laurent and myself. And if time permits, we'll open up the conversation to some of your questions, if you have some at the end. And, but without further ado, uh, please join me in welcoming Laurent. And we'll actually start by showing you a, a documentary video depicting the Horn perspective, the show at the Pompidou, uh, for just a few minutes. Yeah, it's like three minutes, I think. Hello, I'm very pleased to be here. And uh, I will uh, show you first, uh, um, as Beatrice said, a documentary video. Um, because the uh, own perspective show I had at Pompidou Center actually um, inspired me a lot for the sound fossils that uh, you can see now in New York at the Sean Kelly Gallery. Uh, some elements uh, are the same, some other were add or some other are missing. You will see, so I'll just show you the video.
So I decide to um, just talk about a few show and a few um, artwork to try to explain what I'm doing. So uh, basically I'm working in a different uh, field, medium. I'm using, as you saw, film, uh, uh, object, um, sound, uh, painting. The name of the show at Pompidou Center was The Horn Perspective. It was linked uh, with the history of one antenna called Horn Antenna, installed in the New Jersey in the 60s. And with this antenna, a very big uh, discovery uh, has been uh, possible uh, by two scientists, uh, Penzias and Wilson. They discover um, a strange frequency uh, during some tests they were doing. And uh, after a while, they, they, um, they learned that finally it was the frequency of the Big Bang. So they get the Nobel Prize for that. And uh, me, I was interested first by this uh, object. This is an archive from the NASA. I was interested by this object first for its uh, cinematographic uh, shape. I like this idea of a horn like uh, a screening uh, cone. And um, I, I start to be interested without to know actually the, the history with the Big Bang theory. And um, I use it first uh, in, a, in a show um, in a, a museum in France called the Musée de Rochechouart because I wanted to, to, to create a camera obscura and the shape I create to, uh, from the window to the, to the room with the camera obscura was a cone and also for another reference in this uh, exhibition I create some speakers, the first speakers after uh, you will see the other one. And um, so I use the shape of this, of this uh, antenna without to know its history. And just for, uh, for an aesthetic uh, and a visual um, aspect. After doing some research, I understood that the, uh, the object, the scientific object, help to make possible something that interests me a lot, the idea of a sound fossil. Actually, some uh, people, some scientists in the 20th century um, think that it could be possible to extract some sound from an object, for example, a pottery or a stone, and this sound could be randomly recorded by some vibration. If you imagine, uh, for example, a worker doing a pottery with a turning pottery and a metal stick in the antiquity, he could, with this metal stick, um, record randomly some, uh, some, some sound of the, um, of the room. Um, with the vibration of this metal stick. Actually, it's the same, uh, it's the same way to record some disc normally before the, the CD. So uh, this is a contemporary mythology, and a lot of my work are inspired by those uh, kind of contemporary mythology. Uh, so I decide to, to work on this idea for my Pompidou show, and in the same time, I was interested by the object, the horn antenna. And at one point, I noticed that, that my interests were uh, mixed between those two, uh, those two story. And especially for a reason also linked to my work, mainly I tried to find some situation where something that looks impossible start to be possible. So I had this possibility with those two uh, notions, the sound fossil and the horn antenna. So um, in the exhibition, this is a picture of the exhibition at Sean Kelly Gallery. 
Uh, I show the video. It's a shooting of um, 35 millimeters uh, film with um, a post-production with some strange element flying and disappearing. Show you a few other picture. Um, this is another room in the same exhibition at Chan Kelly Gallery. I decide for New York um, to, to do this small model um, in wood and brass of the horn antenna. And I would like to show you again the, the big one. So my interest to do uh, that kind of object um, was to first use the fact that not a lot of people know this antenna. And um, I like this idea that when you discover the object, um, the viewer asks him himself, uh, what is the function of the object? And after reading the text or having some information, he can understand his, um, his, his history. But I like the I like the, um, the possibility not to know what, uh, what, is, uh, what is the object and what is his history. In the same, um, in the same exhibition, I'll show you a few. In the same exhibition at Pompidou Center, I also did um, this antenna, the Tesla antenna. It's a, basically a, a brass uh, sphere linked with the lab of uh, Nikola Tesla. He was a scientist of the 19th century. And again, the idea was to uh, use an object from the past, uh, a strange scientific object, and use an archive, I found a postcard on the web, and build uh, the object. Uh, so to reactive, to, to give life to something from the past. Uh, actually, all the objects that I have recently done try to do this shift, this ambiguity of uh, first for uh, the origin of the object. I like, for example, that for the speaker, the speaker that you, you can see, it's not really possible to know uh, if they have been uh, built or if they have been uh, found or, uh, if, uh, of, or if the artist really uh, made, made them. Same for all the objects. I try to, to give this uh, this kind of strange moment where you don't know if it's an artwork, basically, or, or not. The antenna, uh, from the beginning, is not an artwork, but it starts to be an object in the exhibition. And finally, it's a model in the last exhibition. So all the objects uh, move from one situation to one other in a different scale, in a different technique. And what I like is try to create some link between all those objects and trying to build a kind of archaeology and some connection. Talking about antenna, could you tell us a bit about the piece that you had at the Palais de Tokyo, this yeah. large scale metal installation? So I just try to this. find. Yeah, it's yeah. just before that, right. So talking about this strange activity, for example, um, in the big horn antenna that I've shown at Pompidou uh, Museum in Paris, um, we put the sound, the restitution of sound um, linked with the frequency of big bang found with this antenna. So it was maybe possible to hear something, but even not to know exactly if 
the antenna was in, activi in activity uh, with activity or not. Same for, uh, for this installation at uh, Palais de Tokyo in Paris, linked with a research military uh, program uh, called HARP. Um, it's in Alaska, and uh, it's based on the research of the scientific, uh, very interesting character, Nikola Tesla, that I mentioned before. So his idea was in the 19th century to be able, for example, to have some electricity wireless or to do some, um, to light uh, all the world with some strange uh, electricity in the ionosphere. I mean. So does it mean that it's, it's sending electricity up in the air? What's Tesla the... was working on uh, this subject, and this uh, military uh, device exists really, and uh, it sends some electricity in, um, in the ionosphere, just after the, the atmosphere. So, so it, it, it's a strata that is above the atmosphere? So yeah. It's quite higher up in the earth. What, what what's, inter the, what's the goal of this? What interests Military me research? again with this uh, research is that it exists really, but same time when I talk about it, people think that it's fake. So it's really a game between fiction and reality and, um, and something you real. You mentioned rumors that around yeah, the Yeah, this is another program. layers of the, the work itself, but also uh, it's a layer of the, of the real uh, research uh, base, um, you can find a lot of uh, story, fiction, conspiracy about this military device. So basically my idea was just to install the same feeling that uh, you can have or you could have if you visit this place by uh, reconstructing uh, the whole um, uh, antenna and uh, of course, it's not exactly the same scale, but basically, it's really close from the reality. And of course, the viewer, uh, it was in an exhibition linked with the idea of electricity. The viewer didn't know if something was working or not, because you, you, you can see those strange wire on the floor. They have some element. And also, in the same exhibition, some other artwork were really working with electricity. So it makes a kind of confusion uh, active. So that kind of uh, feeling of impression are very important uh, for me in my work. Actually, it's linked with um, desire to make things um, not clear and also to, uh, to, to make that the viewer ask himself some question and try to understand something try more to um, install some questions than some uh, answer. So in the same exhibition, uh, even at Pompidou and now at Sean Kelly Gallery, you can see this small painting. That was the first of the series uh, called Studies into the Past that I started one year ago. The idea, this is uh, the one that you can see in New York, one of the paintings. The idea was to, again, install, install a kind of fiction about primitive Flemish painting. Um, I start to work with a restaurant with some people from the Louvre in Paris. And my idea was to repaint some existing element to um, do a, a new composition with uh, some element from different painting from the history of art and to add an element from my video. It was a way to reverse time for me and to give the feeling that I could be inspired by this painting that uh, I saw in a museum, for example. And that, also- That actually didn't exist. Yeah. So you're really combining, in that case and others, for instance, the style of primitive Dutch painting, 16th century painting with 
the, the, of and course, the, the painting, uh, works. yeah, the painting um, doesn't exist by itself in the history of art, but it, it was a way to invent a, cav a kind of memory of my own work, uh, to add an element in the art history and to play this fiction to make maybe that the viewer in the exhibition could think that we borrow the painting that inspired my video. So the link with the video, for example, in this painting are the birds that you saw before in the installation. But I did, of course, some other painting. Um, this series is linked with another video called Psychokinesis. Show you a few. So these are drawings? Yeah. Preparatory drawing generally done after the painting. <laughs> so um, let me show you just a video linked with this other painting to make things maybe clear. Explain the, the title of just yes. to make sure we're not all confused. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it's always too late. Really. Um, the title Psychokinesis is linked with the again with another mythology um, that believes that you could move an object by concentrating. Uh, yourself a lot, <laughs> and um, so we have a very concentrated audience. Yeah, you, you, a lot of movies are based um, on this uh, mythology, uh, like um, Carrie by Brian De Palma, mm -hmm. and a lot of <laughs> other things. I mean, it's a very old uh, so the idea. So power to move things with your with like your brain, second. basically. Right. Yeah. So um, same time there is. There are some other references, uh, as you can imagine. Um, the, the important thing is that, for me, you don't need to know the work. If you see the painting, even if you don't know the video before, it's obvious that something strange happened. Even if it's not a rock, it could be with the eclipse also. Um, at this time of the... Uh, art history in painting, uh, eclipse has not been really uh, represented. And of course, a, a flying rocks, um, same for the flying rocks. Uh, this is another uh, series of painting li linked again with another uh, video, the, the eclipse. So I will talk more maybe after. Uh, um, about the, the, the video itself, but just to show another small extract.
that was a, a fake eclipse mixed with a sunset. And of course, it, it doesn't really uh, exist. So what do you mean a fake eclipse? Um, a so sunset? it's digi uh, digitally made. And, um, so you shot, it's an actual footage of a sunset? No, everything is fake. Um, with the rocks, it was a real rock. And there is a story uh, of the video. It was shot in a Tenerife uh, island. And the rocks of psychokinesis is a real rock. I mean, it exists by itself, but we just you know, animated. Do the, animated it. And um, for the eclipse, everything is totally uh, digitally um, constructed. constructed. But I'm not really interested by the idea of uh, high technology or computer or I'm more interested by the reception, by the viewer itself, and by playing with the idea of reality. So, um, going back to the, the, eclipse. the eclipse and the exhibition at the, at the Gallery in New York, um, each project works with different elements. Um, so, with the eclipse, I start to do a neon e eclipse with two uh, circle, just uh, with uh, just two centimeters difference, one from the other. So, for each project, I'm doing different other objects that can work separately or together, and I like to play with uh, the with the link, with the connection between different of this uh, of those objects. Um, for example, in the, in the exhibition, the light of the neon um, lights the painting and there are some connections. Also, uh, each video is always shown as an installation with a specific way uh, for each situation and for each video. For example, for the eclipse, orange carpet and an acoustic wall. So this is another element of the, of the show in New York, an echoic wall. It's a series of different wall, sculpture wall, um, playing with some acoustic element. So this is one of the wall. It's, for example, here black, and I play with the reflection of the sound, but also with the reflection of the, um, of the light. Could you explain what's an anechoic yeah. structure? Or the, is? This is a, a picture of a silent room. Um, those elements, those uh, triangle pyramids, are used to basically cancel all the sound in a room. So it gives a very strange impression um, because there is no noise. Basically, you have noise everywhere all the time. But when you cancel the noise in a room, it starts to be very scary because you can hear your own heart and it gives mm -hmm. out, yeah, and it gives an impression that you don't know before. And um, those elements are also used to cancel uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, fields and to do some specific tests. So there is a link again with some military uh, use, some um, acoustic and sound uh, uh, use. And, and you mentioned that a, a silent room could actually also provoke the loss of balance, for instance. Yeah, when, when, you, when, when you don't hear, you are confused with your relationship with space, and it's very difficult to move. So you, yeah, you lose the notion of, uh, of, the, of the room and of the space. So is this one of the reasons why you show those pieces in a video installation to evoke a certain physical confusion too? I, I show the room and the, the, the anechoic wall for different reasons. First, I start to do a radio studio. It's another part of my work. I do a lot of uh, architecture projects. And that was Radio Color Studio at Palais de Tokyo in 2006. I created this room in collaboration with the radio. And it was possible to um, use it for the curator, for the artist, to do some interview, to record, to do some recordings. And also, uh, the radio had a radio show each day for one hour. 
Um, so I use some, you have different model of those uh, anechoic uh, element. After- so These you just showed are actually functional. They really soundproof. That was space. functional because it was done with foam. With foam. So it really changed the acoustic. Uh, after playing with metal, of course, it's much more less functional, and it's <laughs> but it's it start to be really a, a sculpture, a wall sculpture, and uh, to 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 be one of the element of my installation. So um, here you can see oh uh, one of the way I used to show the psychokinesis video. You can see also the speakers that we saw before in one other exhibition, and one of the anechoic wall. And here it's the one I show in New York now. So it's in copper and with a different size. So why the choice of copper in that case? Um, the old room, in the old room you have this anechoic wall, you have the model, the seal screen, I will talk more about the seal screen after, and the neon sound fossil that you saw at the beginning. So the old room is about reflection, about light, about um, the idea of uh, uh, sound in the universe and uh, frequency. Um, the copper is uh, one of the first interesting metal. It has a strong history, even in art, of course. And um, I like this uh, analogic feeling. You know, the, uh, even if the way to, to build the model, with, uh, it's like handmade. And I like this idea when you don't know the, what is the model reference, to see this object uh, as something strange that has been built maybe by a strange scientist in a, in a small laboratory. So um, again, it's not important to know the history of the object, even if I think it's interesting to know more after when you read text or when you, you have more information. So in the same room, you have this seal screen called retro projection, it's a French title, but I think the, the word in it English would is be retro projection. <laughs> and it's, it's done with a picture I found in a magazine called La Nature, Nature, uh, a scientific magazine from the 19th century. And it's a, a meteorite found in, uh, in Mexico. The six screen is done with uh, ink, um, with silver ink, that provide a kind of strange reflection. When you, depending the the position you have in the room, you can understand the picture or not. So again, it play with the reception of the artwork and what you get, what you don't get, and um, something not really clear. Um, I like that the viewer asks himself where, what, how it has been built and where it, uh, where it come from. So some other uh, pictures that I've used to do some uh, six screen. So here you can see the, the connection between uh, the, 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 the three of the four artwork in the same room. Can you maybe come back to the horn antenna and the different shapes that it's taken in your work? You had this really large scale installation then you decided to make a smaller model for that show and the relationship it has with the other pieces in that room? You mean in the first exhibition? Yes, compared, yeah, between the Pompidou. I often change size in my work and scale. Um, some video have 
two different edition between uh, because of two different size. For example, I did some videos that I show in black and white in one small TV and in a large screening in color. So um, I like those two different kind of feeling. Uh, the object as a strong, large device and something very impressive that could even um, uh, involve your body. And the, the small, small size of an object where basically when you look at the object from your position, you have the power on it. You, let, you, you lose this uh, physical, but it's more about uh, the history of the object and its origin and the, the fact that you could ask yourself which period it has been done and if it's an historical object or not. So this horn antenna, how, how did you come across it? How, you said you didn't know anything about the history first, so you were not looking for it. Um, we, we've, we were doing some research uh, for a, a catalog that uh, I've done, uh, a mo monography, oh, right. mm -hmm. the black body uh, radiation. radiation. And for each project, because my work really um, start always like a project, like a film shooting. Um, even if there, is, there are no film, I like this temporality, this idea to work on, uh, like to, to take a few months to work on a project and to do some different objects that are, work, are working Around together. So we work on the catalog and each chapter is linked to one project and for each chapter we did some research um, to find some archive picture mm -hmm. and I found the picture of the own antenna like that so we didn't know uh, what's the source of what this image NASA 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 the NASA archives yeah oh and they're online right yeah you can uh, you can, f I mean, you can use and find the picture very easily. So um, we were looking f uh, some picture linked with the anechoic wall, mm -hmm. and uh, we discovered this uh, this picture. So first, I use it as an invitation card for an exhibition. Just after, um, I, yeah, I discover what was the function of the object itself. So what started as an illustration actually became the source of a new work. Is yeah, this how it happens a lot with your work? Or? It's also linked with the idea to uh, rebuild an object with a document, with an archive, and to give life to an object from the past. Uh, same time, without to make it too contemporary and to, uh, to play with this. Uh, with Ambiguity. This. Yeah. Should we open to some questions yeah. in, the, in the audience? Is there any question or comment on the work? Yeah. Well, pass you. Hello. Um, hey. Uh, so there was a really strong source for your, your Netherlandish paintings, for the, the, the paintings and what they were made of. Was there a strong source for the videos as well? Like a, there's a lot of really evident source material in, the, in half of the work, but I was just kind of curious where aspects of your, your video came from or, or if, they're, if they were also coming from the uh, Netherlandish perspective. You mean if I base my research for the video on some archive or some document? Or some movie or some film? No, actually the, the, the film are really a starting point of my uh, research and they mostly came from nowhere. <laughs> And um, uh, after I start to construct some installation around the film and to do some connection to invent a, a, a kind of a small world around each project to construct this fiction. But um, they came from 
not physical document or um, uh, object, but more from uh, contemporary mythology, some, um, uh, for example, the, the rocks. Each, each project is a very long uh, story. The, the, the psychokinesis video with the rocks, I was invited in Tenerife Island in the Canaria in Spain for the creation of a new museum. Um, they commissioned a new museum to Herzog and de Meuron, and uh, I was invited in an exhibition called uh, Maternité Cosmique. <laughs> Cosmic Maternity? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I start to do some research there. Uh, I visited the place, and I discovered a place near a volcano, very close from a landscape of the moon, very strange. And I decided to organize a shooting there. So we were there for a week, uh, filming just rocks because nothing else was uh, interesting. And um, so basically uh, doing a crazy shooting, filming rocks with a team of 10 people. And uh, um, after the week, it's a long time of post-production. And I decided to, to use just uh, one shot of two minutes to and finally to make that the rocks moves, you know. So it, it, it was strange for the people from the museum to explain, you know, that um, it works like that, you know. It's a kind of, uh, each, each project is a, is a small uh, ad, uh, adventure and it's based on the, as I said before, on the cinema uh, timing and schedule. I like the, the idea of preparation, of uh, uh, organizing the shooting, and after to, to work on the post-production. So only afterwards you did background, background research and archival research to find actual stories, anecdotes, or theories. But sometimes I know the, 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 the things before, and I, I, I do a link between uh, one shooting and uh, one, one new work. Sure. But it sounds similar to this inversion that you seem to be making very often of constituting a corpus of references after the fact. Yeah, of course, it's like to construct uh, the memory of the work uh, itself um, after doing the, the work. Um, actually, what, uh, one of the last work Yeah, one of the last work is a neon memories of the f future. It was also the title of the show that um, I had the, the chance to curate at Sean Kelly Gallery in July. Um, here you can see uh, more the, 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 the building. Um, it's in Leum Museum in Seoul and the color go from the dark blue to the white. And I guess it's maybe a permanent uh, installation uh, there. And it really shows this idea to create memory of the future, basically to play with time and to play with the past, the present, and the future of the work itself, but also create some future or past references of the work. The color imitates a fading effect. Is that, it? Is that how it appears? Here the fade was linked to this idea, yeah. And um, the exhibition uh, I created was uh, based on the idea that today artists work a lot with the subject of time and uh, um, a lot of try to use some references and uh, play with this ambiguity of the origin of the work. So I invited um, uh, maybe 15 artists, plus uh, we also show some uh, Duchamp work with the dust done in collaboration with Man Ray and some Joseph Cornell uh, sandbox and uh, collage. But we show uh, David Mayakovic, uh, 
euh, Marie Nugonier, euh, Mathias Bitzer, a lot of contemporary, yeah, a lot of contemporary artists dealing with some uh, documents, some archives, some uh, historical references, and um, yeah, playing with those kind of uh, notion of time. Notion of time yeah. So I understood your, I, the idea that you were talking about, the concept. I was wondering when you looked at that sort of industrial object that you just had before, the picture of the, the Nobel Prize people working on, what was your view of that as its own work of art, just the, the object itself? Because it reminded me of sort of industrial photography like Bertinsky, and that as a work of art sort of seemed kind of very, um, just a very strong statement. I was wondering when you looked at it, did you think of it as a work of art? Um, yeah, my interest is um, for the object, of course, because visually it's very strong at the beginning, from the beginning. My work is to show how um, some devices can um, also um, bring a kind of aesthetic and uh, be visually interesting. And I, I like the fact that some uh, mi military research program could provide some very interesting, uh, some visual uh, aspect and to, to play with this. I like also the idea that something could seem beautiful and be dangerous. So, um, of course, it's uh, an obvious uh, starting point. Yes, they are by themselves very interesting. And after I just play with the idea and with the function and with the scale and uh, uh, to, to, to try to create a new situation. But most of the times, there are unknown program or object, and I also try to bring them to the art scene. Speaking of what you said about the horn antenna and the fact that you thought it looked similar as a, um, a lighting that you would find in the cinema with a video projection, um, I remember that in earlier works you were very interested in the notion of para-cinema. Um, you have a piece actually entitled yeah, um, I've done uh, about 20 different film projects. So tonight uh, I've just shown the first with the birds, the rocks, and the, the eclipse, um, psychokinesis and the eclipse. Um, I've been interested also by some uh, cinema um, uh, element object. Um, Mainly, I try to find some situation where the, the reality could be ambiguous. For me, the cinema is the tools of power, and it's also close from this idea of military uh, device. Um, and I play with the idea of the memory of the cinema. So I did two different projects. I went to Cinecita, studio of cinema in Roma, historical studio of cinema, and I get uh, the authorization to shoot the Gangs of New York uh, set mm -hmm. uh, by Martin Scorsese. So uh, I filmed the abandoned set um, like uh, a cinematographic object without uh, action. And it was like a ghost movie for me. So in the sense that the set were a device yeah, and they produce a strange impression because when you lose the action and when you change the point of view uh, of the camera, you know, I said it just done for one angle. If you change the angle, it changes totally the impression of the, of the set and you can discover that it's a set, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's really about the materiality and the texture and the idea of if it's a house, if it's a model, if it's a drawing that we film. So basically, I went there and we did a shooting. 
uh, about this idea. Um, the idea of, of um, like manipulation come into your practice. Like I see a lot of military reference and how you you yourself manipulate things and the military may be manipulating things. Is there any correlation or idea? Um, I like to, to build some situation of course and of course when you do some Art or some artworks, you manipulate the idea of the of the viewer, and you try to to install a certain feeling or impression. Um, of but I'm how to say that uh, I've not impression. It's not based on a paranoia that could you know say that we are all manipulated. Um, it's more that some um, s s I like the situation, I like the territory when you don't know, where you don't know everything. It's more about the idea of representation uh, of the world that uh, is around us, you know, and that today it's very difficult to build your own idea of this world, you know. Uh, because it's so complicated and so uh, um, so large uh, that it's more and more uh, difficult to find your own way to to think. So I went to the gallery opening um, and I was really intrigued by the film, um, and I noticed that there were these big like tape lines kind of like this that seemed like a walkway. And for me, the film was very visually immersive, but when I was walking towards the screen, it felt like I was really there. However, everyone else in the gallery just stayed still and stood at a distance. And then I noticed in your photo that you had two people seemingly sitting in the front. So I was wondering what was your intention with how the viewer would interact with the space with that video? Because for me, it was, as I was walking towards it, it felt like I was really there and everyone else was kind of like standing back, so. Um, the, the first idea was uh, the idea of perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to, to really uh, show the video as a, the realistic size, as a natural size, you know, like uh, the scale of one by one, and uh, um, to open the space and uh, what I like about video installation um, is that you can decide the time that you want to, to spend and the position that you can take and uh, the, 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 you know, you can move in the space, it's up to you. I don't like the sc cinema screening. Uh, I think it's a very uh, restricted uh, area and um, f for me uh, it's really, uh, difficult to stay like you maybe <laughs> one hour and a half <laughs> in uh, in a room like that so uh, I, i'm interested uh, to do video in the installation for that reason i could do cinema um, by placing the speakers which have different sizes and different shapes how, how did you come up with those speakers what are they made for me they were part of the forest and they are like object in the forest and um, they, uh, they try to, uh, to play again this idea of uh, uh, not uh, identified object, you know. You don't know uh, if it's an artwork, if it's a found object. Um, and um, they are very, really part of the installation and like some uh, living uh, mm. element. I, um, specifically with your paintings and a little bit with your objects, I'm curious how much you're involved in the fabrication. Do you, um, do you personally paint the pictures? 
And do, are you, uh, do you personally build the, the models and objects? And how does that affect um, the meaning of the work? Uh, no. Uh, as you imagine, uh, I'm not doing, I mean, uh, what interests me is, uh, is to find the ID, to find the, the connection, to find the concept, and to, to, to play with the reception of the artwork. So I'm doing everything in the sense that I, I design everything before. For example, for the painting, we choose some different element, each, because nothing is uh, invented, really. Uh, each element comes from one painting of this uh, period of primitive Flemish. So we put elements together. But after, what I like is to use the people that uh, are able to do the most beautiful effect and most strong. So if it was me, uh, I think uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Same for the sculpture. One, one last question. No. Cheers, I thought. Hi, Laurent. I was wondering, since a lot of your work has to do with these, the imperfection of perception in these sort of abstract world scale scientific theories. I was wondering how much you were intending for it to reflect on the viewer as uh, the imperfection of their personal perception of just everyday sort of phenomena. Because I know that that's personally how it's affected me, changing the way that I, I think of what I see as real, what, how my perception is registering in my mind versus how I had seen it before. And I was wondering if, if you intend for your work to register on a personal level in that way, or if your major concern is the sort of theoretical, global, larger abstract. Uh, actually, both of the two, uh, I mean, the, the two uh, things. Uh, I think I was really impressed by the movie of uh, Cronenberg, uh, David Lynch, uh, because they play with the idea of reality. At one point in the movie, uh, the character um, lost his connection with the reality or cross different reality, goes from one to the other. And actually, what is really interesting is that that is allowed by the new uh, mathematic or uh, physics theory today with the string theory or, or with uh, uh, quantum, uh, physics quantique? Quantum. 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 That, that kind of thing are theoretically possible. So I like this connection between cinema and uh, science. But um, this is the first aspect that involves you really as a viewer. And after about the art itself and the reception of the artwork today. I think that many of the artworks that um, I can see are very often construct like an advertising. You know, it's done to make you understand something with a strong message. And you can not miss the point. It's an artwork. And of course, I think that today, for the artist, and, and I'm not the only one, uh, we like to play with this idea that you cannot recognize the style of the artist, the idea that it's an artwork, but it's more about the concept behind. Um, so I think the idea of the radical style that makes that you can recognize the artist and his uh, artwork, for me, is a little bit um, not finished, but from one time, and we move to one other, where it's very often difficult uh, to recognize. Uh, it's not about uh, the style. I don't know if it's. No, I guess that's why also you subverted the primitive Flemish style with your own elements that are both fictional and based on real phenomena. Mm. When you have this levitating. And eclipse that, by the way, it chose to happen 
at sunset. So it's not only a quite rare phenomenon, but that takes place at a very specific moment of day and time. Mm. Well, I can only thank you so much to uh, have attended tonight's lecture. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. And I will encourage you. Thank you very much.